great, wonderful. So we're going to go back to our QC and went ahead and check these. And the rest of these searches, um, the unique sets and complex structures, um, search are searching through the document uh, to make sure that, for example, um, if you have a sidebar with a figure, right? You know that figures um, get the fig, um, the fig uh, character style. Oh, sorry, paragraph style. Um, and then you have sidebar and then sidebar after SB and SB after it. Um, what you'll end up with, um, if you leave it alone and you don't apply this, um, the proper structure indicators around that, um, the hub will actually treat the first sidebar paragraph as its own sidebar, the figure as a separate element, and then the next sidebar uh, paragraph as its own sidebar. Um, and it'll structure it that way. Um, and you don't want that because the figure is actually part of the sidebar. Uh, so in this case, um, you would want to um, wrap things in um, structure um, indicator tags. So I can give you an example here. Let's go down to our sidebar. Here, right? Um, that might not be the best example, but uh, let's say for now that we have, make that SB aft. And don't worry about how I'm just changing this. This is just for the example. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and change this, copy that. Well, Elvis is doing this. I just want to mention that this is something that you guys might see a lot in your textbook. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something that I think once you're aware of it, it'll be pretty easy to spot. Mm -hmm. For example, like what Elvis is doing here, you may have a, uh, a, a sidebar, maybe a box, and there's an image inside of it. Those mm -hmm. are cases where if you see that, this kind of triggers your brain a little bit to, mm -hmm. to do the action that Elvis is about to do. Mm -hmm. And this so, is also something that's brought up on our, our site as well that we can send out an email for that goes into this concept in depth. Right, so we don't have to go fully in depth into it here um, as it's more of an advanced um, composition um, um, task. Um, so in this case, the hub would treat this as a sidebar, this as a figure, and this as another sidebar, a separate sidebar. Um, and we don't want that. We want this whole thing because this figure is actually part of the sidebar, right? So what we will do is we actually select this entire bit of text, insert structure indicators, and you'll see that there's various um, structure indicators, not just chapter. In this case, we know it's going to be sidebar. So we go ahead and apply sidebar. And that is what we're searching for when we're searching for unique sets. Um, and that's what that um, check is uh, for in the QC checklist. Um, what this will do is it will tell the hub this entire section is a sidebar, not just one, a figure, and then another sidebar. Yeah, and you won't necessarily see the impact of this action right away. Yeah. It'll look pretty much the same in Word. It'll mm -hmm. look pretty much the same in your print book, but mm -hmm. this will help the actual XML file that we're gonna talk about later in the process to be contained. Everything is gonna be held within single sidebar tags, not broken up into a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a clean XML file later on, even if we, you may not be sure about why we're going through this action right now because it doesn't really impact anything until later on. But mm -hmm. From our, our workflow, we like to always have that whole process in mind. So we handle all stuff like this right away. And so um, at this point, so we've gone through, we've, we've explained why we have the, um, why we search for those unique sets. Um, and here we'll go back to our, um, to our structure, um, excuse me, to our QC list. And we're going to go ahead and mark that as checked um, for. So here's, um, we actually did the complex structures already. Um, actually flip this around a little bit. There's another instance where you want to use um, um, structure tags in a specific way, right? So let's say you have this sidebar and then you have right after it. I'll show you this. Let's say. So let's say you have this kind of setup here where you have your sidebars one on top of the other. Um, again, 
right? We just discussed like, hey, you know, the hub is going to say, oh, this is one big sidebar. But wait a second, this is actually two separate sidebars. In this instance, you'd want to have structure indicators around one and the other. These are what we call stacked elements. Um, and in this case, we'd go in and say, and I'm just doing this quickly because we already did the same steps before. I just want to get to the point. You'd want to set it up in this uh, way. So you have um, begin sidebar, the actual sidebar text, end sidebar, and then the next one begins. This will actually allow the hub to say, oh, these are two separate sidebars, even though they're stacked one on top of the other. Okay? And so those are the two things that we just checked for. Now, my apologies for mixing those two up. So let's just undo these and bring this back to where we were. So we'll go back to our composition QC. And so we've gone through the unique sets or that which I just described, where you have these stacked elements. And then complex structures are when you have um, an interplay between like sidebar and figs or sidebar and equations and things like that. Okay. And here you can check for non-SML styles, but we sort of already did this check. You could do a visual check through your uh, Word file and just check as um, I did with Kathy um, over the break where you just take a look and take a look down the left-hand uh, side for the paragraph styles. Um, but in that instance, you wouldn't catch any character styles that are not SML um, um, styles. So the best way to check for these is you'd go back to your Word file right and you can do the report styles uh, option here in the SAI and then report styles in active document and you see that it gives you non SML styles but again you also checked for that when you did the file checks and you checked for that when you went through the hub so if you are pretty confident with those checks as you should be then you could skip this over but if you are not so confident you're like wait a second i've added some things i've changed some you know i've changed something let me go through this check again rather than going through upload and all that all of that you can actually check for it here and you see our report actually found nothing so we are a-okay there so again that was report styles report styles in active document and then non SCML styles, and that will generate a list of all non-SCML styles in your active document. So we'll go back to our QC. We can check for that. This one is an, a bit of a, um, this one's um, an interesting search, right? Uh, because sometimes what you'll have, you'll have authors break up a paragraph using soft returns, and soft returns, once we convert outside of Word, are nothing right they will essentially then blend everything together uh so the best way to search for that oh go ahead and does, does anyone need us to differentiate between hard and soft returns just in case anyone doesn't understand what that term means mm -hmm. oh a hard return um actually i think it would be best if tim describes this because he's um the typesetting expert uh yeah sure um so we kind of think about like line breaks versus when is something being called its own paragraph line breaks you can add an elvis i don't know if you want to just like put mm -hmm. one in or something um so there's like a hard return we can identify it really easily in word because we can see those two pilcrow characters so right there i know that those are both hard returns or what we call and we can also see that the second one that i was just generated has an sbo so it has its own paragraph definition associated with it uh, these are things that are going to, these breaks are going to be maintained throughout the whole process. So if we're breaking up paragraphs like that, then I know everything's going to be fine. What Elvis just did now is put in a soft return. You can see that we're keeping with the justification of the text. That's why it's all stretched out like that, because it's still trying to justify to a new line. Um, and also, there's no secondary style. If we look at that left-hand pane, it doesn't have like an SBO associated with it. So in this case, it's fine. The hub's going to remove that hard return, and that's what we want it to do. What we don't want to do is let's say your author broke up what should be its own paragraph with soft returns. So maybe he wants the he or she wants these to be two separate paragraphs, but they just use soft returns. Well, now in the hub, they're going to get combined. That soft return is going to get removed, and this is going to become one big paragraph. 
because that's how the code is kind of read. There's like an open SBO tag and a closed SBO tag with no breaks in the middle of it. Right. So is everyone kind of seeing the the issue that we that we look through or why it's a problem? Correct. Yes, yeah, shift return. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes for whatever reason, you know, authors like to make their word files look pretty or they might like to make them look nice and they might be using things like these shift returns in order to sort of like break lines in a certain way when in fact we don't want them breaking lines for any reason other than to indicate that something is its own paragraph. Correct. And so uh, what we would be searching for is what we just described now, just to make sure that there are no um, uh, soft returns. There's actually a way that you can search for it. I know it works on PC. Uh, Tim can confirm um, if it works on Mac, but if you bring up um, the nice little box, I'm going to avoid using the pane since I know that. Sometimes that doesn't come up. Um, you can search um, for special characters. Um, and Word calls it a manual line break. It's caret L. Um, and let me actually put one in so you can see where it finds it. And if you hit find next, you'll see that it found it in there. And you can actually do a search for that to make sure there shouldn't be any of these um, in your composed file. So if you find them, um, you'd want to analyze and see what the author actually intended to do at that point. So in our case, we don't have any of them, right? So we're gonna bring that up and say, find next. Hey, we got no soft return, so we're a-okay at that point. So we can go back. And ideally, you know, as a project manager, way back ago, we talked about kind of reviewing a file to get a look at what styles are used in it. That would be a good thing to note as well. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that are things that eventually, as you get more used to looking at these files, will trigger in your brain like, oh, whoops, that's a problem. So you might communicate to the person doing the composition, hey, there's a lot of soft returns in this, you know, please review them and make sure that all, everything that should be hard returned is. So articulation here um, just indicates, and we can celebrate our composition milestone, that's true. Um, Articulation here um, just indicates what we've already sort of checked, right? Which is we've gone through our document and make sure that everything that needed to have a first has a first, everything that has a lot needed a last has a last and whatnot. Here in QC, let's say you're getting this file, um, you know, from the person composing it or, you know, from whomever, um, you'd want to do that check that we've already got uh, through and done. And you can do that just as a visual check um, by going through and comparing um, the document, um, but the hub should already have taken care of a lot of the articulation. So um, it should be a rather quick check of just scrolling through the document and looking at certain, um, at the styles, make sure that, hey, look, this num exercise number list is right after this um, exercise after head paragraph. It should, have an NL, it should have an F, it does, great. And then you'd go through and do that. All right, so we're gonna go do that. And then the last uh, thing before we break um, is that we're going to check our notes. The reason why we check our notes is because of the way that Word treats notes, it almost treats it like it's a separate file within Word. Um, so sometimes when you're composing, it's very easy uh, to forget about the notes um, and they end up not being composed, right? Again, the checks that you will have done up to this point should have caught this, but again, we are taking um, the mentality that we're getting this file from who knows what. Right, and so to check the notes, all you have to do is go to references here and then show notes when you're in draft view and the notes will appear here as a, its own little pane. And so we'll check and we'll say, okay, everything's EN, our EN um, numbers are composed as EN num as here. And so everything is good to go. You'd also check uh, for rendering to make sure that the rendering made it through. Uh, by default, the SAI's rendering option will also uh, render things in the um, in the EndNote section, uh, but it's always good to check, uh, especially if somebody has added something after um, the fact. So we went ahead and we checked our footnotes and endnotes, made sure that they were composed, right? And so anything that may, um, may need to be either a table note or a footnote or something that is not part of the main text flow needs to already be composed at this point, right? Uh, so if you have a table note somewhere, like for example, to, let's go down to the end where we have our table and you have, 
we'll just add a paragraph up there. And we'll say, if you have that and it's composed as TD, you should actually just compose that as TN, right? And again, you can also do that via the style galleries um, available there. And so, and there you have your table note. Um, and so there you would want to check to make sure that everything is essentially properly composed um, on that paragraph uh, level. And so